Hello, welcome everybody to uh, this afternoon's Getting to Know Me. Uh, well, not me, but Nina. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've got a few questions to ask Nina today um, to share for you all. So I'm going to make a start. I'm going to make some introductions first. So I'm David Lucas. I'm the Deputy Services Manager. Uh, I'm Dave Lamb, a former service user and service user rep for uh, CGL Inspire. And I'm Nina Cole, I'm an alcohol recovery coordinator based at Accrington East Langton Spire. So it's made a change for me because I've been on the other side of, of doing the getting to know me. So it's nice for me to ask some questions for Nina today and I'm going to make a start in doing that. First question for me, Nina, is first no, firstly, actually, let's get this right. Congratulations on your new role. Thank you. Cheers. Well done. Really well done. Really pleased to have you with us and you'll be fantastic. Thank you. So I suppose we lead nicely on to the next question. What is a recovery coordinator? What is that role? What does it do? Okay, so I carry a caseload of alcohol uh, clients and the role is to work with those clients to motivate them, um, to inspire them. Um, to help them get from where they are to where they want to be. Um, I work with different agencies, so that might be social services, it might be probation, it could be family services, um, and we all work together to get the best, best outcome for each sort of client, depending on what that client wants. Excellent. So what do you like about your new role, Nina? I love... Um, speaking to clients um, that's my passion it's finding out what they like what they don't like where they are where they want to be and how I can help them and how our service and other services can help them to get to where they want to be that's what I love excellent so what do you think could be better well this is going to be a standard answer at the minute but to be honest I would love it to be face to face do you know what I mean I would love to be able to have proper one-to-ones not on the phone um but it is what it is um and we've learned through covid we've learned to to get the best out of what we've got um so we still we're still a service we're still functioning fully as a service and we do see people when we need to face to face um but yeah that'd be so much better yeah i'm sure it will happen soon enough it will so so what, what effort would, would required, Nina, in terms of for you getting to where you are now? What kind of level of effort did that involve? Um, loads, in a word, loads. Um, it's, I put as much effort into getting to where I am, um, getting clean and staying clean as I put into when I was using. That's how much effort. So it is... It comes first, me staying clean comes first because my job, my family, my house, all that shiny stuff will disappear if I'm not doing what I'm doing. Um, so I get up every morning and I do what I need to do every day to be able to be, if I'm not in a good place, I can't support other people. Um, so I have a good network of people that I can speak to that help me. I have fantastic colleagues who are helping me no end at the minute. Because there's loads of stuff I don't know. Um, but yeah, um, it's a lot of effort, but the rewards far, far outweigh any amount of effort that you put in. Um, but the more you put in, you will get out. So if in terms of the effort that you put in, you're getting a massive return on that investment huge, then? Huge, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. So what is it like now? Now you're on the, said you, well, the other side in terms of being a CGL employee as opposed to somebody who, who's been, been in treatment and through treatment. What, what's that experience like? Um, on one level, it's a bit strange because the people I'm working with have been my case coordinators, my key workers, and I've worked with them as a service user, a client. Um, but it's also interesting to see how much work goes in behind the scenes that as a service user, you don't even know exists by people that you'll never meet. Um, making stuff happen, that is, that's fascinating. And it's, it's amazing the amount of 
what one client sees is only kind of the tip of the iceberg for what's really going on for their case. Um, that's been amazing to see that. Yeah, fascinating insight, isn't it, that in terms of what the client sees and the recovery work, but in terms of what it's like an iceberg scenario, isn't it, in terms of what actually happens behind the scenes to make that happen? Absolutely. So what, what, are you, what are your impressions now of, 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 of Inspire? What, what, where do you sit within that? Um, it's a fantastic place to work um, with some amazingly inspirational people um, who are so passionate, they will not give up on people. Um, they go above and beyond, you know, on a, on a daily basis for people. Um, and it's... It's inspiring, actually. To I know I know what I want from the role, um, but it's nice to see that everybody else wants the same as well. Um, yeah, it's um, it's a fantastic place to have got a job. Yeah. Okay, and what what are your aspirations in your new role? Where 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 do you want to be? What what? I know it's early days, but have you got any aspirations within your role? Um, at the minute, I just want to be good at what I do. I want to be able to help people in the same way that I was helped um, and inspired. And I want to be in the same way that my case coordinators through the years have never given up on me. Even when I gave up on me, they didn't. Um, I want to be able to do that for somebody else. Um, and be, you know, it's it's not about big wins it's not about the person who gets through detox and stays clean it's about the person who stops injecting it's about the person who gets to see the kids on a Saturday for the first time it's the the, the, the not so measurable wins as well so it's it's all that stuff it's it's being able to do what I got wonderful thanks Nina I'm going to pass you over to Dave yeah thanks for that David uh, some really good answers and some good insights into your new role there Nina uh, these next set of questions are kind of to get to know you a little bit better. So what does Nina like? Nina likes rock music. Nina likes Guns N' Roses and Bon Jovi and Iron Maiden and that sort of stuff, all the old school stuff. Um, that's what makes me tick. Um, I like cats. Um, and surprisingly, I like people. <laughs> um <laughs> Honestly, I, I thought I had a real problem with people. And the more I got to know my cats, the, the more I liked cats. Um, but actually, I really do like people. I like to find out what makes them tick. Um, yeah, and just getting to know people. And that's a, that's a new skill I'm having to learn um, because it's something I've never done while I, while I was still using. I didn't do that. Um, yeah, I like cold days when it's windy. Um, when it's raining really heavy, things like that. Um, simple things, to be honest. Um, I, I'm not into fancy cars and big houses and stuff because it doesn't, doesn't really mean a lot. It's the people that are around me that mean a lot that I like. Yeah, great answer. That is, I mean, it's good that you like people now that you're going to be working <laughs> with a lot of people. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I do get that. I, I was similar, not liking people, but I can actually quite like them now. They're not so bad. Um, what are your dislikes, Nina? Things you don't like? Things I don't like. I don't like, ironically, from somebody who, as a using addict, couldn't tell the truth. Um, I actually don't like being lied to. I'd rather people told me things that I don't want to hear, but it'd be the truth. Um, smaller things, I don't like porridge. I don't like wheat bits, rice pudding, things like that. <laughs> Ugh, can't do it. Don't like them. Um, and I don't like being in pain, funnily enough. Um, it's, yeah, see, it's simple things again. Yeah. Nice yeah. one. Um, uh, what do you do to relax? On your weekends off? On my weekends off. Um, yeah, I don't really... I'd like to say I, don't, I do relax. I'm not sure I do really. I tend to do things like food shopping and driving, which I'm not sure is relaxing really. Um, but I do no, I do watch films, but if you ask me to quote something from a film or name an actor, I can't. I just like watching them. Um, and I listen to music a lot. I do 
still listen to music a lot. Nice one. Um, and what would you like to do? I guess we've all kind of thought about this. What's the one big thing you'd like to do when, when COVID is over? Give people a hug. Yeah, man. Just to, just to be able to, to give even my mum and dad, let alone my friends, a proper hug. That, that's what I want. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're all looking forward to that day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks, Nina. I'll uh, pass you back to David. Thanks, Dave. That's really touching. Thanks, Nina. Um, okay. So, Nina as a service user then. Um, if that's okay with you, Nina, want to know, we would like to know, is what was your experience like as a service user? Oh, I came into service a long time ago, long before CGL were Inspire. Um, it was still the Crime Reduction Initiative or something it was called. Um, and you picked up your prescription once a fortnight and, and that was treatment. That was all it was. Um, and over time that changed and we started to have groups um, more recently. But treatment was, it was very much done to you. Um, so drug services told you what you needed to do and you either did it or you didn't. Um, over more recent years, and certainly before I went into treatment, um, residential treatment, um, it was very, it was becoming more, um, where do you want to be? How do you want to get there? How can we support you to get to where you are? So it's becoming more of the client's journey and us supporting that journey rather than us doing that journey to them. Um, so yeah, I've, I've seen services change a lot, a lot over time, and they are certainly, certainly a lot better these days than they ever have been. Yeah, all right, that seems like an age ago in, term, in terms of who we are now. So Absolutely. yeah, script and go, day with the days, not. <laughs> yeah. So what, what was your experience like um, with the service and the services that, that were around at that point? Uh, so early on, um, I had drug service involvement, I had social services involvement, and it, it was very much, we tell you what to do, um, and you do it or you don't, um, and if you don't, there'll be consequences. Um, the last year that I was uh, a service user with CGL, um, there was kind of a mind, a mind shift, sort of a shift in, in the way things were done. Um, and I was in quite a serious position um, with my children and social services and stuff. Um, and it was almost like somebody suddenly shone a spotlight on what was going to happen. Um, my coordinator got honest with me and said, you are going to lose your children if you don't do something very serious. Um, and that was the kick up the bum that I needed. Um, and I'll be, it's that honesty, I think. You know, I'd be, they'd kind of wandered around it a bit, not really told me how serious things were getting until it got to that point. So um, that team that I had, that multidisciplinary team of social services, family support, drug services, and my family as well, my mum, my, my dad, my sister, um, all, of, all of us being able to work together um, got me a really good outcome. Um, and without that group of people, I don't know where I'd be. So it, it, was, it was a lot of different services, but it was led, um, it was led partly by what I wanted and what I needed, but also by where my life was heading, you know, and, and a need to, to put the brakes on and do something. It's good. Interesting inside that, Nina, in terms of where, when, when one's in the grip of, of, of that lifestyle, if you like, and um, it, it, from what, I'm, what, I'm, what I think I'm hearing you saying is it, it becomes normal. Therefore, the, the, you don't, anticipate the risk in terms of what what's at, at, at threat of being lost I suppose yeah. and um, and it needed for someone for you to kind of give you that jolt of well actually this is the reality this is what could potentially happen here was, yeah. was a, a wake-up call for you is that what you're saying it was it was absolutely and um, 
Yeah, it, it genuinely was. It was it was almost that one sentence, you are going to lose your children. Right. Um, as, as, as brutal as that sounds, that's what I needed to hear. Because as you said, it, it, as grim as it is, that's my normal. Me getting up and using it in the morning is my normal at that point. Um, and from the outside, it was probably horrific. But for me, that was what my life was. Um, and I needed to see that there was a different way. There was something different. I didn't have to be like this, you know. Um, yeah, eternally grateful for that statement. Absolutely. So what kind of challenges did you face, Nina? Do you know, myself, <laughs> myself, <laughs> I was that resistant, non-compliant client who said I was doing stuff and didn't, you know, um, said, uh, you know, was asked to do things and thought, I don't want to do that. Why do I want to do that? You know, until I got to that point, like I say, my coordinator said, this is what's going to happen. And it was like I ran into a brick wall and thought, yeah, I'm going to have to, whether I like it or not, I am going to have to start doing what they're suggesting. I'm going to have to go to the groups. I will need to do an inpatient detox. I had tried community detox and just couldn't do it. Um, yeah, so one of my main challenges was myself, <laughs> to be honest. Um, one of the others um, was probably prejudice as well so from other services so like my GP uh, for my mental health physical health as soon as I said I was on a script shutters come down they don't want to help um, and also social services getting them to understand what addiction means they, do, they don't always understand that it's an illness, I, I believe it's a disease. Um, and we're not doing it cause it's fun, cause it's not, you know, and it, it's difficult. It was difficult to get other services to, to help from, from our perspective rather from, the, from theirs. They needed one thing, but I needed them to do it in a different way. Okay, thank you. So what did you do? What, how did you overcome those challenges? You said a lot of the challenges were you. How did you overcome you? How did you overcome me? Um, yeah. Um, it's, it was realising that it was me. It was realising that I was standing in my own way, if that makes sense, that I was the one that wasn't doing stuff. Nobody was going to do this for me that actually I had to put the effort in. I had to do the detox, I had to do the rehab and I had to carry on recovering after that. And that as much as everybody wants to support me, nobody could do it for me. Um, that was a massive, massive wake up call to realize that. So yeah, that's that's what I've, what I've done. Kind of goes back to the effort, doesn't it? In terms of yeah. how much effort and, and, and the listening and the, and the taking on board what people are saying is, is a challenge in itself and yeah. and overcoming that is, is listening and trusting uh, what people are saying. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. It is. And, and understanding that you, the people who are trying to help you are trying to help you. They're not trying to make your life difficult, even though it feels like it at the time. You know, you're asking me to do something I don't want to do. You're trying to make my life difficult. No. They're actually trying to help you, but they can only help you if you help yourself. Thanks, Nina. Really great answer to those questions. Great insight. I'm going to pass you back over to Dave. Yeah, thanks, David. Yeah, some really good kind of inspirational and very honest, honest answers there. I really appreciate your honesty on those. Um, these next set of questions about kind of your role and your time as a volunteer. So what initially motivated you to volunteer with Inspire? I knew I wanted to volunteer um, because lots of reasons, but one of the reasons was I had a massive gap in my CV. I hadn't worked for 20 plus years and nobody was going to employ me, basically. Um, and also, I wanted to help people. I'd, I'd suddenly, as I said, discovered that I quite like people and I'm empathic and I'm compassionate and I didn't realise I was any of those things before. And I wanted to help people. 
uh, when I moved back to East Langs, um, I realised that I could volunteer for Inspire and that would mean that I could do what I always wanted to do. So part of the problem I found when I was in services was that because of the way services were run years since, I felt like I didn't have a voice. My opinion didn't matter. What I said kind of didn't make any difference to my outcomes because it was being done to me. Um, so I wanted um, to give our, our clients, our service users, that voice so that they got what I didn't get. Does that make any sense? Um, to, to, try, to try to help them to get their best outcome from for how they want it to be so that they can improve the service. Um, and that's why I became a service user rep because that's what that role is. You know, it's, it's giving service users that voice. Yeah. So it's all about kind of using your experiences and, and what you kind of gained from recovery and paying it forward, I guess. Absolutely, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, awesome. Uh, what was your experience of the volunteer recruitment process when you first joined? Can you remember? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, when I read this question, I was like, ooh. Um, yeah, do you know, it was really simple actually. Um, initially, I referred myself back into service because I didn't know how to do it. Um, and I spoke to um, a, a man who, a coordinator at Accrington, and he said, actually, you've done what we can offer already, but I know a man who can help you volunteer. And they referred me to Mo Ahmed, who is the coordinator for volunteering. And we had, at the time, a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, now it will be on Zoom. And it was literally a couple of forums um, and it was really, really simple. Um, and there's so many different things that you can do. Service user reps, just one of them. You know, there's dozens and dozens of roles um, from, you know, um, facilitating groups to being a peer mentor. There's, there's so much you could do. Excellent, thank you. Thanks for refreshing my memory. <laughs> Um, and once you were recruited, what kind of training and personal development opportunities were you offered? Oh, do you know, I can't, so many, I can't even remember them all. Um, I've done, tra I've become a trainer, so I've done train the trainer um, so that I could deliver uh, groups to other service users and to peer mentors. Um, I trained in some groups, stress management, did that with you, Dave. Um, and... We delivered those over Zoom um, to peer mentors and other service users. I've done naloxone peer-to-peer -peer training so that I can train other people to give naloxone to people who need it. Um, I've done so. Oh, I've, do you know? I can't even remember. I've done so much. I've done um, Facebook. I've done um, calls to service users on a, a monthly and then a weekly basis to fill out the, our, our service user questionnaires, uh, the Pulse survey. I've done so much. I need a, like a whole interview just to tell you all yeah. the stuff that I've done. Yeah, Mo does find a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so keep, yeah, he'll keep you as busy as you want to be. <laughs> um, what kind of support did you get kind of around the role to kind of um, support you in the role, but also support you in kind of other areas of your life as well while you were doing the role? So um, Mo as my line manager uh, was always, always on the end of the form. Um, the training you were offered, you could go over it again if I needed to. With I was support with IT at home because I needed to do the service user calls from home. Um, so I needed a laptop for Zoom as well. So I was supported with all that stuff. Um, I was supported with my other peers, so the peer mentors, the other service user reps. We have WhatsApp groups. Um, we supported each other through those. We couldn't go for a bro and stuff, um, but we chatted on the phone. Um, and we just, you have support from your, your own sort of volunteer network, but then in the wider sort of job, um, the staff never ever make you feel like just a volunteer you're a member of staff do you know what I mean and you're on an equal footing with members of staff you're not just given all the rubbish jobs you know the photocopying and that sort of stuff 
um, they, they're there to, to teach you stuff, to help you to learn, to grow. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's, it's vital having that spot because it's quite a big change from kind of how our lives were before going into kind of the volunteering role. It's, it's good to have that spot there and, and know that it's there. Um, overall, what was your experience as, as being a volunteer for Insire? Busy, definitely busy. Um, well, that was my choice. That wasn't that wasn't because I was ever forced to do anything. I I was as busy as I wanted to be, um, and I can't recommend it to anybody enough. I really can't. Um, I certainly wouldn't be where I am now without it. Um, and it's it's helped me with my confidence. I faced fears. Me sitting on a camera like this. 18 months ago would not have happened. Never would you have got me on a camera. Um, the self-confidence, the self-esteem, my ability to speak, you know, to say what needs to be said, but still be polite. And that's uh, just just to, to be who I am um, has, has grown massively through through the opportunities that, that I've had as a volunteer, so. Yeah, nice one. Um... What worked well? Eventually, Zoom. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we did have a few teething problems, that we, it, but but we learned because we were learning together. It worked really. Yeah. It did work really well, um, and we found out we could do a lot more stuff using Zoom and the phone um, and social media, uh, Facebook. We found out we could do a lot more stuff than we realised we could, and it's made us innovate. It's made us do things differently. Um, and it, I've learned, I've learned so much that I now use for other things as well, um, through my volunteering stuff. Yeah. Um, and finally, on, on this section, um, what could have been better in your time as a volunteer? That's a tricky question because apart from having been able to do it from like face to face, which is, you know, apart from that, do you know what, I'm not sure. Because I don't, I don't think everything that I wanted to do, I've done. Um, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure anything yeah. could have, to be honest. No, because I, I think everything kind of got adapted to really kind of quickly. Didn't yeah. It? Once the ball got rolling, kind of when the first lockdown, everything kind of fell into place. It was yeah, it was quite impressive. Yeah, that was a. I thought that was a, a tough question to answer and I looked at it. Uh, thanks for those answers, Nina. Some great answers there. And I'll, I'll pass you back to uh, to Mr. Lucas. Well, journey so far. Wow. So I've got um, a personal question for you, Nina. So if you could speak to your younger self right now, what would you say? Do you know, if I spoke, do you know, I don't think I'd listen, actually. <laughs> with all the will in the world I don't think I could say anything you know so so telling my younger self to not pick that first drink up or or whatever I genuinely I don't think I'd listen but um what I would say is you can change you can change but you've got to want to change you know um life doesn't have to be like how it is or how it's going to be and um, and if you make that effort and put that put the work in uh, you can change i think that's all i could say that 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 might i might have listened to that if you'd have told your younger self um this is where you would be now would you have believed it probably not no um certainly oh five years since um, I honestly thought I was going to die using addicts. I really did, um, because I didn't know that recovery even existed. I didn't know that you could stop using drugs and stay stopped. Um, and I certainly didn't know, not really, that people who'd been service users could then go on and become the people who helped the then drug addicts and the service users. I didn't know that was possible. Um, and what a refreshing change. Absolutely. But it's very much possible to live Absolutely. in Absolutely. 
Yeah. Okay. So what is your message, Nina, um, to people ha that who may be at their beginning of the journey um, or those who have yet to come to us or reach us or would reach them or whatever? What, what, what would your message be? Don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on, on looking forward. Um, it's hard. It's hard work. But what you will get out of every effort you put in is so much bigger than you can imagine. If I'd, if I'd wrote a list when I went into to detox um, of what I thought I was going to get out in 12 months, this would not have been on the list. You know, I would have sold myself really short. Um, and look, look at where you are, look at where you want to be and look at how you can make that change because you don't, you can't make it all in one go. You have to do it a little bit at a time. And if you ask people for help, people will help you. People are dying to help you. Um, so don't give up and ask, ask everything. So just in context then, Nina, for me, if I may, so how long were you in active addiction for? Um, include because I was, I was an alcoholic and then picked up drugs. So in total, um, about 28 years. So how long have you been in recovery for and achieved what you've achieved? 23 months. 23 months. Yeah. Yeah, big difference. Big, big difference. <laughs> Astonishing difference in terms of that hard work and that investment after nearly 30 years of, of, of disinvesting in yourself, so to speak. Yep. And then 23 months of investment and the return is, it just blows my mind every single time. I get goosebumps thinking about it because it, people don't always see that because it's so difficult to see, you know, a week, a day, a minute in front of people when you're in inactive addiction but 23 months wow thank you i'm thanks, going to pass david. you back over to dave well, thanks david yeah really kind of inspirational answer there really enjoyed listening to that um finally we've got some questions from service users that were posted on facebook and i'll send some more All right the first question what advice would you give an up-and-coming service user i could have done with the answer to this a few months ago <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Um, be honest. Um, be honest with the service users that you're speaking to. Because the more honest you are with them, the more honest they'll be back to you. And what you're trying to get is their feedback. Um, when you pass it on, pass it on as they say it. Don't. Don't try and sanitize it. Don't try and make it sound all pretty and nice because if, if they're annoyed, they're upset, then CGL is inspired, they need to know that. And that needs to be conveyed in what you're, what you're doing. So your, vo your, your, your role is to, to pass on the voice of the service user, whatever that looks like. Um, yeah. yeah, and enjoy it, enjoy it. Yeah. That's a good and definitely enjoy it. Um, what is the secret of your success? It's not a secret. There's no secret. It's hard graft. <laughs> it's hard graft. That's what it is. It's I get up every morning and decide, you know, I can lie in bed all day and feel sorry for myself, or I can just get up and get it done. Um, and it's it sounds simple, and some days it's really not simple, um, and it's not easy every day. But if I want to carry on getting better, getting more well, recovering, however you want to put it, um, I have to do that. That's what I have to do. Um, so it's not a secret. It's just graft. It's about really wanting that new life, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And the, th the more you get, um, and I don't just mean, you know, the, the shiny stuff, you know, the new telly and the mi microwave. That, I don't mean that stuff. I mean, feeling better in yourself. So even learning to like myself and being able to sit with myself without needing to use a drug to change how I feel, um, that's enormous. Being able to form normal, healthy relationships with people is enormous. 
Um, but you've got to learn all that stuff and that takes effort. Yeah, the internal stuff is massively important because all that external stuff can go in the kind of the drop of a hat. And you've got to be happy with what's going on inside. Definitely. Yeah. Terrific answer. And uh, this final question is, is is brilliant. I don't know who put this one forward. Um, what fears did you have going from a volunteer to being employed? And uh, how did you overcome those fears? Do you know, one, one of the biggest ones was responsibility. Because I've, I've run my whole life from responsibility. Um, and being a volunteer, even though it's not the case, you always internally feel kind of like, yeah, but I'm only a volunteer, it'll be all right. Mm. But now I'm not. Um, and the book stops here to some extent. Um, so that was one fear. Um, I've overcome it by knowing that my colleagues have got my back and that they will help me. Um, and if I can't do something, I ask, to be fair. Um, another one was actually coming off benefits, which sounds, sounds a bit nuts, but I've spent my whole adult life on benefits. Um, and just having a job and, and earning money, more money than I've ever had on benefits as well, um, and learning to be able to manage that and not just go nuts, um, that was quite scary. Um, yeah. But that's about asking people too. So, I, you know, I've, I've supported my sister, I've supported my dad, you know. Um, yeah, lots, lots and lots of little fears, you know. Will, will, I, will people like me? That's always been one of my massive fears, you know. Um, and as it happens, most of them do. I probably annoy a few people because I'm a bit loud and I'm a bit, Sometimes I'm a bit brutally honest and I don't always mean to be. Um, but I'm there to do a job. And as long as I'm doing my job well, then I can I can live with that. Yeah, I can relate to those fears, definitely. Um, but I guess it's, it's pretty much like everything else in kind of recovery and in life. You just kind of have to face them head on and get support where needed. So, yeah, some great answers there. Um, the final thing is not a question. This is um, a comment that was left. Let me go. This is by um, a message from a peer. They wanted to remain anonymous, but um, I really wanted to read this out to you. So it says, hi, Nina. I just wanted to say a massive well done on your achievement. You are truly a fighter and source of inspiration. I've had some challenges recently, and unfortunately, I've had a relapse. But hearing about your success, you have given me energy to fight back. You are a proper role model for all of us. Thank you for showing us it can be done. So that was a message from kind of one of our peers to you. I just wanted to pass that forward. Thank you. Wow. All right, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, thanks very much for your honesty and um, the answers that you've given us today, Nina. Um, it's been a pleasure to be I've been kind of on this journey with you we both started volunteering at the same time and we've both kind of come full circle so it's been I, I did relish kind of getting to interview to interview you today and put these questions on you um but you you, you know you, you you face up to it and you know you give some really good answers and you have been a massive inspiration to me as well you really deserve what you've got now you, you know you've really put the hard work in uh so thanks very much Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I want to echo that, Dave. Thank you. Really well done, Nina. Excellent interview. Uh, really um, honest. Um, you know, bundled of integrity within there as well. And you, you, you epitomise hope. And, and what I mean by that is. It, not you as an individual, but in terms of your journey. Um, 28 years. And, and I, I know people who are still at it 30, 35 years, and, and it's never too late. And you've demonstrated that today. And um, I want to thank you for sharing that that message and, and being so honest in your interview. And really nice to be on this side for a change. 
<laughs> so wonderful, Nina. Well done, and uh, it, it massive, massive gain to have you with us as a as a CGL employee. Um, still ha having the the service user at the heart of everything we do, and I know you will continue to do that and challenge when we don't. So thank you. I will. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thanks, Paul, for yours. <laughs>